Monsieur Jeremy McNeil, président de la Société royale du Canada, chers membres du Conseil de la SRC, honorables invités, chers collègues, ladies and gentlemen, bienvenue à la cérémonie de, réce de réception des nouveaux membres uh, 2020 de la Société royale du Canada. Welcome to the 2020 induction ceremony of the Royal Society of Canada. My name is Sheila Embleton, Secretary of the Society, and I will be the MC for this ceremony. The Royal Society of Canada recognizes that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories across the country upon which those of you joining us remotely today are located. We invite you to adjust the following land acknowledgement to one more appropriate to your current location. Physically, I am in Toronto today for this event and acknowledge our presence on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations. The area known as Tikaranto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat. It is now home to many First Nation, Inuit, and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. Aujourd'hui, la SRC recevra uh, 95 nouveaux membres au sein de ces trois académies. Normally, I would be joined on the stage by the treasurer of the society, who would be overseeing the signing of the official registry of fellows to the Royal Society of Canada. That will not be happening today. We will begin with the national anthem. Nous allons maintenant commencer avec l'hymne national. Chers nouveaux membres, dear new fellows, welcome. Avant d'aller plus loin, j'aimerais prendre quelques minutes pour rendre hommage aux nouveaux membres à vie de la SRC. RSC fellows move to the life membership type once they've been members for over 25 years. We would like to take a moment this afternoon to thank the 2020 life members of the RSC for their contributions to the RSC. Voilà les nouveaux membres à vie 2020 de la SRC. Timothy Anna, Janet Bavilla, Bernardo Bazan, John Bergeron, André Bernard, Josiane Boulad Ayoub, Anthony Bowen, David Bundle, Stephen Burley, Marcia Chandler, Melvin Komisarov, Margaret Conrad, Frank Cunningham, Jean Davignon, 
J. Martinez de Buchanda, Merlin Donald, Francis Julien, Friedrich Gede, David Goldsman, Roderick Guthrie, Michael Hayden, Norman Hooner, Jane Lewis, James McKinnon, Patrick Mahoney, Sukuro Manabe, Brian Massam, Patrick McGrath, Andrew Miel, Tim Mossman, Vijaya Kumarmurti, Paul Perron, Fernand Roberge, Gordon Rostocker, David Sankoff, Harry Schachter, Stephen Scobie, Edward Shorter, Jean Simard, Brian Slattery, Ching Swen, Sharon Sutherland, Michael Taywalt, Richard Thompson, Thomas Timosk, Lorraine Vaillancourt, Hans Christoph Wolfhard, nous sommes maintenant rendus à la prestation du serment de la Société. Cette tradition veut que chaque membre récite à voix haute le serment de la SRC afin d'être officiellement intronisé comme membre. To follow the tradition, the new fellows will read aloud the oath. You will find the oath in both official languages displayed on the screen. Normally in the induction ceremony, the new fellows repeat the oath chorally together, tous ensemble, but this does not work with Zoom. One new fellow will read the oath in English, suivi de nouveaux membres qui va lire le serment en français. We ask all the new fellows to say the oath, but please stay on mute. We will first do this in English, then in French. Amanda Vincent will say the oath in English. We, who have hereunto subscribed, do hereby promise, each for themselves, that we will endeavour to promote the good of the Royal Society of Canada and to pursue the ends for which the Society was founded, that we will be present at the meetings of the Society as often as conveniently we can, and that we will observe the bylaws and regulations of the Society. Et maintenant, en français avec Paul Alain Beaulieu. Nous sous-signer promettons chaque membre en notre conscience de promouvoir le bien de la Société royale du Canada et de poursuivre les buts pour lesquels la Société a été fondée, d'assister aussi souvent que possible aux réunions de la Société et de respecter les statuts et les règlements de la Société. I would now like to introduce Professor Alan Shepard. Professor Shepard is an accomplished academic leader and scholar of early modern England, literature, science, and theater, who is passionate about the future of innovation and the future of universities. He became Western University's 11th president and vice chancellor in July, 2019, following successful terms as president and vice chancellor at Concordia University, and before that as provost at Ryerson University. Alan. Thank you, Sheila. And greetings, colleagues, honored guests, friends, and family. Of course, I wish we could all be together in real time, and yet I'm so pleased to have this chance to say welcome, and thank you for joining us today to celebrate this newly elected group of exceptional scholars who are being honored by the Royal Society of Canada outstanding academic achievements and exceptional careers in research and in the academy. And welcome to everyone joining us online from across Canada and around the world to share this special occasion together. It's always valuable to honor and celebrate intellectual leadership. We pay tribute to those among us who are dedicated to the pursuit of truth and excellence and those whose expertise and hard work and grit all encourage us to build a better future. Here at Western, the university is a long-standing institutional member of the Royal Society of Canada, and we're proud to sponsor this year's celebration. On Western's behalf, I am delighted to convey our warmest congratulations to the entire group of 2020 fellows, members inducted into the College of New Scholars, Artists and Scientists, and medal and award winners. It's also a special privilege to have this opportunity to recognize six of this year's inductees who are my colleagues at Western. They include new fellows, Professor Lisa Saxida, Canada Research Chair in Translational Cognitive Neuroscience and our Scientific Director at BrainScan. Professor Peter Jaffe, a psychologist and academic director of our Center for Research and Education 
on violence against women and children. Professor Jing Zhang, Distinguished University Professor and NSERC Senior Industrial Research Chair in her Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and Professor Slobodan Simonovic, Professor Emeritus in our Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Added to this list of honorees are Professor Jessica Gran, our newest member to join the College of New Scholars. Jessica is in the midst of a brilliant career in cognitive neuroscience and music. And Dr. Catherine Ivey, who won this year's Alice Wilson Award in the NSERC category. Catherine is a postdoctoral scholar who's just joined our Department of Biology, where she studies respiratory biology and oxygen sensing in high altitude environments. I wish my Western colleagues, together with all this year's new fellows, scholars, and award winners, all the best for continued success. I also want to take a moment to recognize Professor Joanna Quinn, outgoing president of the College of New Scholars. Joanna is a faculty member in political science at Western, RSC Massey Fellow, and Fellow of the Broadbent Institute. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce the president of the Royal Society of Canada, Professor Jeremy McNeil. Jeremy is the Helen I. Battle Professor of Chemical Ecology and Distinguished University Professor at Western, a member of the Order of Canada, and most recently, winner of the Helmuth Prize. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us today, and over to you, Jeremy. Merci, Alain. Go Mustangs, I have to say that. Cher collègue, Madame et Monsieur, comme président de la Société Royale, c'est vraiment un honneur et un plaisir pour moi de vous accueillir à la cérémonie d'induction de la promotion 2020. This ceremony is always a very special occasion at our annual meetings. I'm really sorry that this year we are unable to do it in person, as it's such a wonderful occasion when we have the opportunity to meet with family and friends to celebrate the accomplishments of these exceptional individuals. Cependant, je suis très heureux de savoir qu'au moins vos, votre famille et vos amis peuvent nous rejoindre uh, à partout au monde uh, pour cette uh, célébration uh, spéciale. As one who always looks for something positive in, a, in such an event, I have to say that this unusual situation actually will give the 2020 cohort of new fellows special bragging rights, as you are the first, and hopefully the last, that has ever been inducted virtually. I would like to congratulate this year's inductees on the outstanding contributions that they have made in their respective fields, both nationally and internationally. We are delighted to recognize your accomplishments and to welcome you to the RSC. As you have undoubtedly heard throughout the week and will continue to see, the RSC is a purpose-driven organization. Thus, your election not only recognizes your outstanding achievements, but provides you with opportunities uh, through which you can engage with the community to help us build a better future for all of us. À ce moment ici, j'aimerais remercier des individus et les institutions qui ont reconnu votre excellence et qui ont préparé les super dossiers pour votre nomination. En même temps, j'aimerais remercier les uh, fellows qui ont accepté d'être membres des comités de sélection parce que c'est un travail um, exceptionnel et aussi très difficile. In closing, I would like to congratulate you all again. I look forward to meeting you in person uh, very soon, hopefully at next year's COEE in Montreal. I will now hand you back to the RSC Secretary, Professor Ambleton, Sheila Avu. Merci, merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous allons maintenant procéder à la cérémonie de réception des nouveaux membres. We shall now proceed with the induction of the 2020 new fellows. Recognizing the circumstances that have led this to this first virtual ceremony in 137 years, we have adopted our format for this ceremony. We are delighted that each new fellow will have the opportunity to say a few words, and that as the audience, you will have occasion to see each new fellow and to hear those remarks. Nous avons également invité chaque nouveau membre de 2020 de nous rejoindre l'année prochaine afin de participer, on espère, ensemble in vivo. Cher Président, chers collègues, chers amis, j'ai le plaisir de vous présenter d'abord les nouveaux membres de l'Académie des arts, des lettres et des sciences humaines. 
it is my pleasure to begin with the presentation of the new fellows of the Academy of the Arts and Humanities. John Archibald. John Archibald is a professor in the Department of Linguistics at the University of Victoria. Il est un expert international dans le domaine de la phonologie bilingue, dans la manière de dévoiler des, les représentations et les calculs mentaux complexes sous-jacents à la parole en langue seconde. Deepening our understanding of what it means to be bilingual, his research has provided practical advice to educators, information for parents, and guidance to policymakers across the country. John Archibald. There's a basic component to my research, understanding cognitive complexity in bilinguals, and there's an applied component. Discrimination based on the way people speak is surprisingly evident even today. Le Canada est fier de sa culture multilingue. As we seek to ensure respect of our minority populations, research demonstrating the enormous cognitive complexity that underlies bilingual speech helps to dispel common misconceptions. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Archibald. Lynn Bowker. Lynn Bowker is a professor in the School of Translation and Interpretation at the University of Ottawa. Dans le domaine en rapide évolution des technologies de la traduction, elle a constamment façonné le programme de recherche mondiale en introduisant des approches innovantes pour étudier les, ces technologies dans le cadre de la formation des traducteurs. The transformative influence of her groundbreaking work on technology, on technology use by linguistic minorities extends outside academia and outside Canada to international social and political spheres, engendering a critical rethinking of how language technologies are meaningful, in, meaningfully integrated into society. Lynn Bowker. To solve pressing problems like COVID-19 or climate change, we need the world's best minds working together, whatever languages they speak. Mes recherches sur les technologies langagières renforcent la communication multilingue pour permettre aux Canadiens et aux autres de participer aux conversations les plus significatives. I'm so honored to be elected to the Royal Society of Canada, but I didn't get here on my own. Thanks to family, friends, students, and colleagues who've supported me along the way. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Professor Bowker. Jinhua Chen. Jinhua Chen is a professor in the Department of Asian Studies at the University of British Columbia. Il travaille sur des récits transnationaux du Buddhism, les relations entre la religion et l'État, le monachisme bouddhiste, the la traduction des textes bouddhistes et les cultures du manuscrit. His use of extra canonical, epigraphical, and manuscript sources, alongside the study of artifacts in China, Japan, and Korea, has contributed to new insights in the field of Buddhist studies. Jinhua Chen. I'm truly grateful to be here today to share this honor with my fellow Lawyer Society of Canada inductee. While I'm humbled to receive this recognition, much of the credit is owed to my colleagues here in Canada and around the world. It is with that immeasurable amount of support and guidance that I was able to expand my research in Buddhology, include the many um, collaborative projects and networks that have marked Canada as an important epicenter in global Buddhist study. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chen. Leonard Deepavane. Leonard Deepavane is a professor in the Department of English at Dalhousie University. Il a transformé la compréhension académique de la façon dont le canon moderniste s'est créé, et notamment comment il avait été façonné par le scepticisme face aux revendications modernistes pour la notoriété culturelle. Working with an unexplored archive of daily and weekly journalism, his research examines the rise of difficulty as an aesthetic value and the place of parody, scandal, fraud, and intent in aesthetic, aesthetic experience. Leonard Deepavain. I would like to thank my parents. 
my work addresses fundamental questions of interest to people who read, watch movies, attend concerts, go to art galleries. Questions like, how do cultures agree on or argue about a given work's value? Should we trust artworks? Do they need to be sincere? Why do difficult works make me feel anxious? And how did it happen in the West that difficult works became our most prestigious works? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Deepavane. Jan Grabowski. Jan Grabowski is a professor in the Department of History at the University of Ottawa. Il est un historien de l'Holocauste de renommée internationale dans les recherches sur la destruction de la communauté juive en Pologne et sur les relations polono-juives sous occupation ont apporté des contributions importantes à notre compréhension de la Shoah. His award-winning studies had a significant impact on the transformation of our perception of the bystander phenomenon or the attitudes of mainstream societies toward policies of extermination of Nazi Germany. Jan Grabowski. The wave of populism and nationalism which currently sweeps the world and which threatens the very foundations upon which our democracy has been built is not a new phenomenon. For a historian of the Holocaust, it's clear that the roots of this phenomenon are to be found in the past, past which we can choose to ignore at our own peril. Il est un devoir d'un historien, il est mon devoir, de situer la menace du populisme et du nationalisme dans son propre contexte historique, le contexte qui s'appelle le fascisme et la haine d'antan. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Grabowski. Marianne Ignace. Marianne Ignace is a professor in the departments of linguistics and indigenous studies at Simon Fraser University. Elle est connue pour ses approches novatrices et transdisciplinaires de la revitalisation et de la documentation linguistique autochtone, l'étude des traditions orales et de l'ethnoécologie, et de ce qu'elles peuvent nous apprendre lorsque nous entremêlons nos connaissances traditionnelles avec les sciences occidentales. She has built multiple successful research and educational partnerships in and with indigenous communities throughout Northwestern North America. Marianne. Wait, Pahoydip. Ye Enerians Axis Axis Laz is Sukundum, a Coltens, a Cockle Muchna Elian, Canada, a Sukan Wentum, a Slough Mems, a Stetlach Ams Kuchn to I am humbled and honored to be working on understanding and reclaiming the ancient knowledge of our indigenous elders in our languages, in and with our communities, as it connects to our environments, lands, and ways of being. Thank you, merci. Thank you, Professor Ignace. Valerie Korinek. Valerie Korinek is a professor in the Department of History at the University of Saskatchewan. Elle est l'une des principales historiennes canadiennes de l'histoire culturelle de, de l'histoire des gens. She is the author of award-winning books on queer community, women's cultural history, and food history. Her ambitious and innovative studies have fundamentally shaped how Canadian historians understand feminist and sexuality histories. My research focuses on giving voice to people and events who've been silenced, omitted, or marginalized in our history women readers and editors at Chatelaine Magazine, queer women and men in the prairies, and most recently, same-sex marriage. Writing accessible revisionist history expands our knowledge and it encourages a reappraisal of feminist media, lesbian and gay community building, and activism. It historicizes how average people have worked for change and importantly, demanded equity. My thanks to my colleagues and my family for their encouragement and support throughout my career and to the Royal Society for this tremendous honor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Korinek. Molly Ladd Taylor. Molly Ladd Taylor is a professor in the Department of History at York University. Elle est une éminente historienne du genre et des politiques sociales aux États-Unis. Her groundbreaking research places impoverished mothers, dependent children, and inst institutionalized people at the center of analysis, joining their most private experiences with the public worlds of politics and policy. 
and reshaping historical understanding of welfare, eugenics, and the state. Molly Ladd Taylor. Thank you. I want to thank my colleagues who nominated me and have supported me over the years. My current research explores how images of disability and damage were used to justify get tough eugenic style policies for poor and racialized kids. Although my work focuses on the United States, I think it also speaks to issues in Canada, especially now with COVID. A historical perspective on child welfare, disability, and eugenics is crucial. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ladd Taylor. Leonid Livak. Leonid Livak is a professor in the Department of Slavic Languages and Literatures at the University of Toronto. Ses recherches innovantes dans le domaine de l'histoire comparée, portant sur les rapports culturels franco-russes et russo-juifs, apportent une importante contribution à l'historiographie culturelle européenne des temps modernes. His studies of exilic communities, ethno-religious stereotyping, and transnational modernism have opened new methodological vistas and paths of scholarly inquiry, stimulating innovative research in several academic fields. Leonid Livak. My research in cultural cross-fertilization, geographic and linguistic displacement, creative responses to the accelerating evolution of societies finds new urgency in our time. My studies of mass migration and the efforts of expatriate communities to carry on meaningful cultural existence shed light on the complexity of exilic experience, opening new vistas in our understanding of hybrid cultural identities and polyglot social environments as major aspects of the modern human condition. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Livak. Eric Mestlin. Eric Mestlin is the president and CEO of the Council of Canadian Academies. Il a contribué à des débats influents sur la bioéthique et les politiques scientifiques au Canada et à l'étranger. As both a scholar on ethical, legal, and social issues arising from research, genomics, public health, and international health, and as a leader of academic research centers, advisory commissions, and interdisciplinary organizations, he continues influence public policy at all levels. Eric Meslin. My academic and professional work has focused on two interconnected themes. First, on understanding the many ethical implications of new knowledge arising in science, technology, and health. And second, on applying this thinking to better inform society's deliberations. Good policy needs good facts and good ethics. By recognizing me with this honor, the RSC is also recognizing the many students, researchers, and policy professionals I've worked with here and abroad from Kenya to the United States to France, the UK, and Australia. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you, Professor Maslin. Michelle Murphy. Michelle Murphy is a professor in the Department of History at the University of Toronto. Elle est une chercheuse renommée dans le domaine des études scientifiques et technologiques. She has contributed to critical understandings of the role of science and technology in feminism, environmental justice, reproductive justice, and data studies, as well as the relationships between pollution, colonialism, and science in Canada. She is Métis from Winnipeg, Michelle Murphy. Thank you. Um, the work we do on environmental justice only happens in collectivities. Um, this work that we do trying to address this relationship between colonialism, technology, and pollution is really only possible in collaboration with community members, with elders, with a wonderful Indigenous-led lab, with students, um, with kin, also with uh, ancestors and waters and other kinds of beings. And so I thank uh, all these collaborators. I thank the, uh, the Royal Society. And also I want to say merci and miigwech. Thank you, Professor Murphy. Thomas Nesmith. Thomas Nesmith is a professor in the Department of History at the University of Manitoba. Il a contribué de manière à la recherche en études archivistiques, 
pour qu'elle passe d'un sujet académique marginal à un ensemble de, con de conceptualisation théorique complexe. In forming a new basis for university level professional education for archivists, he has had a major influence on international archival scholarship and shown how society's central concerns are being shaped by archives as never before. Thomas Nesmith. I thank the society for this honor and my family, nominators, colleagues, students, and friends for their support. Unpublished records contain Canada's most extensive body of knowledge. In a knowledge-driven world, they are of incalculable value, but only a comparative few can be archived. Archivists play a key role in determining what will be destroyed or preserved and accessible. My research pursues understanding of the profound implications for knowledge of their role within its historical, social, technological, and institutional context. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nesmith. Winfried Simmerling. Winfried Simmerling from the Department of English Language and Literature at the University of Waterloo is internationally recognized for his pioneering work on Canadian and other North American literatures and cultures in comparative and transnational perspectives. Sa théorisation <laughs> des ouvrages en anglais et en français, de même que ses études de la com communauté noire au Canada, a conduit à un repositionnement des contributions culturelles canadiennes dans le contexte nord-américain, hémisphérique et transatlantique. His publications break new ground with prize-winning works like The New North American Studies, 2005, and The Black Atlantic Reconsidered, 2015. Winfried Simmerling. My work positions Canadian literatures in North American and other transnational contexts. It creates relational perspectives and international visibility. It studies cultural emergence, decolonization and race, alterity and recognition and environmental concerns and the Anthropocene. Ce travail constitue une réflexion approfondie sur les formes différentes de la relation et de l'altérité. Such work on codependence and relational constitution seems as urgent as ever. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Simmerling. Imre Zeman. Imre Zeman is a professor in the Department of Communication Arts at the University of Waterloo. Théoricien de la culture reconnue à l'échelle internationale, ses recherches novatrices portent sur l'influence de la dépendance aux énergies fossiles des so sociétés modernes. Zeman's work propelled a new discipline, energy humanities, grappling with the cultural transformations required for a global shift to sustainable and renewable forms of energy. A highly collaborative, interdisciplinary and public-facing scholar, he is co-founder of the Petrocultures Research Group and numerous initiatives advocating for energy transition. Imre Zeman. I want to thank my family and my colleagues at McMaster, Alberta, and Waterloo for helping me to get here. I couldn't have done it without them. We're ne we need to undergo an energy transition this century, um, but to do so will take more than just changing the kinds of energy we use. Real transition is going to, going to require us to make difficult social and cultural changes as well. And that's what my research does. It maps the social transitions that we have to do uh, in order to undergo a successful energy transition. Thanks. Thank you, Professor Zeman. Nancy Van Dusen. Nancy Van Dusen is a professor in the Department of History at Queen's University. Grâce à ses études pionnières sur les femmes et l'histoire du genre, les histoires de l'esclavage africain et autochtone, et les débuts du catholicisme moderne, Catholicism Modern, elle figure parmi les historiens les plus éminents du monde latino-américain colonial et du monde atlantique en Amérique du Nord. Her meticulous research and thought-provoking analyses have led to innovations in the classroom and in scholarship, providing a more nuanced portrayal of previously underrepresented groups. Nancy Van Dusen. I'm... I'm deeply honored to have been nominated by colleagues at Queen's University and invited to become a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. 
I hope that my ongoing historical research on the disappearance of knowledge about indigenous slavery in the colonial Americas will continue to animate discussions in contemporary Canada and throughout and beyond our hemisphere. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Professor Van Dusen. Gary Waite. Gary Waite is a professor in the Department of History at the University of New Brunswick. <laughs> Il est un historien reconnu sur le plan international spécialisé dans les religions et cultures néerlandaises et européennes du début de l'époque moderne. His numerous publications have shaped scholarly discourse on the Reformation's radical reformers, on demonizing polemics, demonology and witchcraft, on dissident ideas and on relations between Muslims, Jews, and Christians. Gary Waite. I am deeply honored to have been elected a fellow and greatly appreciative of support from colleagues, students, friends, and of course, family. My research explores why some early modern people risked joining dissident groups and why the authorities feared them. Unorthodox ideas provoked intense opposition and inspired new approaches to religious identity and diversity and new ideas. They also stimulated debate, for example, over the reality of the devil and witchcraft. My findings can help us comprehend the nature and impact of religious beliefs today and to challenge those that are irrational and harmful. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Waite. Karen Wiseman. Karen Wiseman is a professor in the Department of English at the University of Toronto. Elle est une spécialiste renommée du romantisme anglais et de la culture juive. She is a leading thinker on form and genre and an acclaimed authority on the relationship between romanticism and such excluded minorities as Jews in 19th century England. Her recent work on Anglo-Jewish poetry's engagement with canonical cultural authority has circumscribed a new field in the study of English literature. Karen Wiseman. My work on 19th century British authors makes contact with many of our current preoccupations and anxieties. In a world so fractured, we all face the challenge of establishing a forum for expression that can articulate our unique subjectivity, as well as our connection with a world that often feels alienating. I'm grateful for the unfailing support of my husband, Arthur Ripstein, and our children, Aviva and Noah, and the Department of English and the Center for Jewish Studies at the University of Toronto. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wiseman. William Wicken. William Wicken is a professor in the Department of History at York University. Ses études primées et ses importantes contributions en tant que témoin expert ont profondément influ influencé la compréhension et l'interprétation de l'histoire et de la place qu'occupent les autochtones par les universitaires, les décideurs politiques et la communauté juridique au Canada. His studies of Mi'kmaq's multi-generational interpretation of its 18th century treaty with the British Crown have been transformative. As a consultant to Indigenous communities, an advisor to government, he works to advance reconciliation. William Wickham. My published work is on the history of Indigenous people in Eastern North America from the 17th century to the early 20th century. I have testified in court as an expert in New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and Quebec, both for First Nations and for government. Four of these cases were heard on appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada. There are different histories here which need to be reconciled without the past becoming a lodestone around our necks. There can be unity in diversity. Understanding our collective histories can help in that process. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wicken. David Wright. David Wright is a professor in the Department of History and Classical Studies at McGill University. Il est titulaire de la chaire de recherche du Canada sur l'histoire des politiques de santé à l'Université McGill. A specialist in the social history of modern medicine, 
He has published extensively on the history of psychiatry, children's health and disability, the development of hospitals, medical migration, and the evolution of Canadian Medicare. David Wright. Thank you very much, Sheila, for the introduction. Um, I'm deeply honored to be elected fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. And like my colleagues, I'm deeply grateful to family, to friends, uh, to mentors, and to my host institutions. My research uh, explores broadly a social history of medicine perspective on topics in the 19th and 20th century. And my hope is to deepen our understanding of the history of Canadian uh, Medicare and public health by placing it in a broader transnational framework. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Wright. Et maintenant, lettre et sciences humaines. Claude Lafleur. Claude Lafleur est professeur à la Faculté de philosophie de l'Université Laval. He is an internationally recognized expert in medieval studies and in history of philosophy in the Middle Ages. Ses nombreux livres et articles sur les textes didactiques latins du XIIIe siècle font autorité dans le domaine depuis plus de 30 ans, tout, tout comme ses autres publications où, où il a étudié, édité ou traduit des textes de penseurs latins de premier rang, tels Boès, Abelard, Thomas d'Aquin, Guillaume d'Occam et Petrarch, Claude Lafleur. Salvete, salvete omnes, étendre sa vie sur des millénaires, voilà ce que permettent les recherches que je mène depuis 40 ans avec Joanne Carrier, mon épouse et collaboratrice. Ensemble, nous rendons accessible l'archive philosophique latine du Moyen Âge, elle-même nourrie de pensées antiques. Merci à notre institution, à nos familles, maîtres, collègues, amis et disciples. Très heureux de poursuivre ma tâche d'enrichissement culturel au sein de la Société royale du Canada. Valete. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur Lafleur. And now from the arts. Marcia Babineau. Marcia Babineau, directrice du département d'art dramatique de l'Université de Moncton, a contribué à la création d'un théâtre acadien authentique et original. Actress and director, she is co-founder of Théâtre L'Escouet a company dedicated to the production of new works endowing Acadia with a new dramaturgy. Elle a formé tout un nouvel genre d'interprète qui s'illustre dans les multiples dimensions du théâtre acadien. Marcia Babineau. And I believe we may have had an internet failure and there is no video therefore from her. Voilà. OK, go ahead. Ça fonctionne. Ça fonctionne, oui. Oui. Euh, la francophonie canadienne s'étend bien au-delà du Québec. L'Acadie, d'où je suis euh, originaire, constitue une autre facette de cette identité. Ma recherche se concentre principalement sur la création d'une dramaturgie acadienne, car je suis convaincue que le théâtre commence et se perpétue par cette dimension primordiale en ce qui a trait à la création de nouvelles œuvres. Je poursuis ce travail depuis 1978 au Théâtre L'Escouette, une compagnie dont je suis l'une des fondatrices et l'actuelle direction artistique, de même qu'à l'Université de Moncton, où je dirige le département de théâtre. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Et merci, Madame Babineau. Blake Fitzpatrick. Blake Fitzpatrick is a professor at the School of Image Arts at Ryerson University. Il est un expert des médias documentaires qui utilise la photographie et le texte pour étudier la relation dynamique entre le lieu et l'histoire. His interpretation of the legacies of nuclear production, cultures of militarization, and the post-Cold War histories of the Berlin Wall has highlighted the importance of the inherited landscape raising timely questions about the physical and cultural meaning of the aftermath of conflict. Blake Fitzpatrick. Hello. My research as a photographer and writer investigates the impact of the global on the local through Cold War histories that continue to affect Canadians today. Images matter, 
They may call attention to histories, make visible the invisible. My work uses photography to trace the scattered remnants of the Berlin Wall in North America and to document the long-term environmental impact of Canada's participation in the nuclear era. Thank you for this honor. Thank you, Professor Fitzpatrick. John Grayson. John Grayson is a professor in the Department of Cinema and Media Arts at York University. Il est un artiste vidéophile et un pionnier du nouveau cinéma queer. Since 1984, his many features, shorts, and installations have explored such queer activist issues as police violence, prison, AIDS, solidarity, and apartheid, both South African and Israeli. He has received over 60 Best Film Awards at such festivals as TIFF, Berlin, Vancouver, Locarno, and Hong Kong. John Grayson. As a video film artist, I'm convinced that new queer stories require new queer forms, especially when we explore such urgent social justice issues as anti-racism, police violence, prison rights, Palestine solidarity, and the ongoing AIDS pandemic. Using tactics of humor and song, I'm interested in how a queer activist cinema can build bridges and join conversations, inviting audiences to engage, to connect, to dream. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Grayson. Clem Martini. Clem Martini is a professor at the School of Creative and Performing Arts at the University of Calgary. Tout au long de sa brillante carrière, il a touché les esprits et les cœurs en tant que dramaturge, librettiste, romancier et essayiste. His innovative, comedic, and social justice-oriented body of work has been shaping Canadian theatre for over 30 years. His award-winning and internationally acclaimed works range in form, breaking conventions and displaying unique artistry, encouraging audiences and readers to broach the most challenging and pressing social and environmental issues. Clem Martini. Good afternoon. It's my great pleasure and honor to join you today. I consider my vocation to be storytelling. I believe it's through stories that we think deeply, test ideas, process past experiences, and conceive future actions. I write books, plays, and films to reflect, to memorialize, and to bridge the gap between cultures and generations. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Martini. Alison Norlin. Alison Norlin is a professor in the Department of Art and Art History at the University of Saskatchewan. Elle est une artiste chercheuse reconnue sur le plan international pour ses dessins architectoniques et symboliques à grande échelle et ses installations sculpturales complexes. She investigates cultural spectacle, interrogating the historical and geographical dynamics embodied in place, contributing to the understanding of the role utopia and fantasy take in shaping real, imagined, mundane, fantastic, vernacular landscapes. Her work has been showcased in many solo and group exhibitions throughout North America, China, South Korea, the Netherlands, Mexico, and Brazil. Alison Norlin. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Um, as a visual artist, I'm so honored um, to be invited to join such innovators, social activists, and creative thinkers. Art, I believe, not only changes the way that we see and think about our world, but also changes how we exist in it. And I'd like to end on a quote by Dr. Seuss that says, be who you are, say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Thank you very much, merci. Thank you, Professor Norlin. Paul Sitch. Paul Sitt, from the Department of Design at York University, has a renowned career of graphic expression spanning three decades. Ses travaux ont été publiés dans plus de 130 livres, 
et, et articles dans le monde. Il a reçu plus de 100 prix en direction artistique internationale, design et photographie. He continues to create groundbreaking works in both digital and print that range across typography, branding, and motion design. Paul Stitch. Hello. Hello, hi. I'm here. Yes. Um, my three decades of research has examined the intersection between art, design, typography, and visual language. It is a true honor as a graphic designer and creative director to be recognized by the Royal Society of Canada. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Professor Sitt. Mark Terry. Mark Terry is a professor in the Faculty of Environmental and Urban Change at York University and in the Department of English and Film Studies at Wilfrid Laurier University. Il est reconnu sur le plan international pour ses innovations dans le domaine des médias numériques. His remediation of the documentary film known as the GeoDoc is currently being used within various divisions of the UN as a data delivery system, a new communications tool bridging the gap between science and policy. His pioneering work with multilinear non-fiction narratives has been recognized by the Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television with their 2011 Humanitarian Award. His work in documenting polar research has been recognized with the King's Diamond Jubilee Medal and the Explorers Club Stephenson Medal. Mark Terry. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. The major challenge facing Canada and the world today is climate change. My work explores new methods and approaches to communicating scientific research to policymakers. Using a remediated form of the documentary film, I call the GeoDoc. The component films of this database project are produced by the people and for the people, with emphasis on amplifying the voices of the global communities of youth and Indigenous people. The GeoDoc accelerates the path to progressive climate policy and serves as a model to similarly address other issues of global concern. Thank you. Mark Perry. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, applaudissant les nouveaux membres de l'Académie des Arts, des Lettres et des Sciences Humaines. Ladies and gentlemen, please congratulate the new fellows of the Academy of Arts and Humanities. I would now like to invite Dr. Julia Wright, President of the Academy of the Arts and Humanities, to say a few words. It is my great honor to welcome you all to the Academy of the Arts and Humanities and congratulate you all on the artistic and research accomplishments that have led you here. Tous mes compliments. You are now part of a multi-generational and multidisciplinary Royal Society of Canada, where the arts and humanities have played a vital role for over a century because of artists and scholars such as you. I encourage you all to become involved in our Academy and the RSC. The RSC office has been operating virtually like so many of us for eight months now, and I would like to take a moment to congratulate them on all that they have accomplished this year, including bringing us all together today to celebrate your work. These are trying times, but we're also learning a lot from how we handle the pandemic. The RSC is leading the way to positive change. Through the COVID-19 task force and other initiatives, it is bringing together artists and humanity scholars along with scientists and social scientists to understand the complexity of this crisis so that we can come out the other side with paths to a better future. These are trying times, but the materials that have been so central to our work have taken on a new prominence as public resources. Music has connected people over distances, the arts have interpreted events for us, ethics and inequality are urgent public concerns getting renewed discussion, and we are turning to history and cultural history to better understand our own moment and the choices before us. The rise of populism and counter-movements to it have already had us talking more about the importance of critical thinking, historical awareness, and the nuances of language and the complex ways in which we use it. Thinking and feeling matter and we are less human and less humane when we act otherwise. The pandemic has reminded us of our humanity, 
and the glorious birth of mind and color, as well as the thoughts that do often lie too deep for tears. It has reminded us that culture is our term for how we connect with each other across time and space. Cultural work is important work, even if it sometimes seems to be invisible work. In her Nobel speech, Toni Morrison suggested that word work, and I would extend this to all of the arts, makes meaning that secures our difference, our human difference, the way in which we are like no other life. This is why we are the Academy of the Arts and Humanities, des Arts, des Lettres et de la Science Humaine. Here today, we make this work visible, we recognize its importance to Canada, and we celebrate it. Thank you all for your contributions, and I hope to be able to congratulate many of you in person at the next annual meeting. Felicitations. Thank you, Professor Wright. Monsieur le Président, chers collègues, chers amis, j'ai maintenant le plaisir de vous présenter les nouveaux membres de l'Académie des sciences sociales. It is now my pleasure to present the new fellows of the Academy of Social Sciences. Joel Baum. Joel Baum is a professor at the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto. Il a apporté de multiples contributions pionnières à la compréhension des processus de concurrence et de coopération entre les organisations. He has reinvigorated research trajectories on organizational survival organizational learning and inter-organizational network formation, and has been a leader in incorporating managerial agency into the study of organizations, thus integrating the strategic management and organization theory field more broadly. Joel Baum. Organizations are the building blocks of modern societies and their everyday influence is ubiquitous. We readily turn to them or construct them when a problem or opportunity uh, exceeds our individual abilities or resources. But because they're so integral, we tend to, they tend to fade into the background and we need to be reminded of their power and impact. My research sheds light on the role of organizations in modern societies by examining how patterns of competition, cooperation and learning among them has shaped their influence and evolution over time. I'm honored to be elected a fellow of the Royal Society and grateful for the support of family, mentors, students, and colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Baum. Adele Blackett. Adele Blackett is a professor in the Faculty of Law at McGill University. Elle est mondialement reconnue pour ses recherches en droit du travail, en régulation du commerce et en approche critique du droit. A key thinker behind the idea of transnational labor law, she has centered a pluralist, emancipation-focused approach to redressing historical marginalization in the world of work. She has been recognized for her expert leadership on international treaty making on decent work for domestic workers, human rights monitoring, and labor law reform. Adele Blackett. Essential workers in this unforgettable year have come to embody how closely the health pandemic maps onto deep-seated societal, economic, and racial injustice. My research in transnational labor law incorporates thick histories of slavery and colonial regimes of reproductive labor, of global value chains and migration to understand and challenge the persistence of contemporary injustice through labor law. Je suis profondément honorée d'avoir la possibilité de combiner l'action intimement locale avec l'action à l'échelle internationale pour favoriser la dignité, l'égalité réelle et la justice sociale. Je remercie mes collègues et mes étudiants, ma famille et ma communauté pour leur appui et pour leur exemple. Thank you, Professor Blackett. William Carroll. William Carroll is a professor in the Department of Sociology at the University of Victoria. Sociologue critique, il porte un regard neuf tant sur les fondements des inégalités sociales que sur les mouvements pour le changement social. His award-winning books and articles have mapped the elite networks through which large corporations and their owners and executives wield power, while also exploring how movements for social justice and ecological well-being organized efforts at reform and socio-political transformation. 
William Carroll. I'm joining the RSC at a pivot point. We face an existential crisis that is civilizational and ecological. I think all fields of scholarship can and must be mobilized in the global public interest against predatory capitalism, against ecocidal practices, against racism and imperialism. I look forward to working with RSC colleagues and contributing toward a just and sustainable world. Thank you, merci. Thank you, Professor Carroll. Joan Durant. Joan Durant is a professor in the Department of Community Health Sciences at the University of Manitoba. Elle est une chercheuse de renommée internationale dans le domaine de la prévention de la maltraitance infligée aux enfants, dont les recherches ont révolutionné la pratique professionnelle et les politiques publiques tout en soutenant les familles au sein de leur communauté locale. Her transformative research and engagement have promoted children's well-being on six continents, have been cited by the UN, the Senate, and the Supreme Court of Canada, and have influenced law, policy, education, and social norms around the world. Joan Durand. Physical punishment erodes children's relationships, impairs their mental health, and alters their brain architecture. It's also responsible for thousands of cases of child maltreatment in Canada every year. I've created a program that transforms parents' understanding of how children learn. Due to the tremendous support of my husband, Greg, my son, Jonah, and my exceptional team, this program is being implemented in more than 30 countries around the world to reduce violence against children. Thank you so much for this honor. Merci. Thank you, Professor Durant. Carol Estabrooks. Carol Estabrooks is a professor in the Faculty of Nursing at the University of Alberta. Membre de l'Ordre du Canada, elle est reconnue sur le plan international pour son travail de mise en application des connaissances dans le domaine des soins aux personnes âgées vivant dans les foyers de soins de longue durée has addressed challenges in the areas of care and life quality for older adults with dementia and work-life quality for their caregivers. Her research informs the transformative change agenda. Carol Estabrooks. Thank you. My research addresses an urgent Canadian priority and one of the moral tests of any government, how we treat those who are in the twilight of life, the aged. My work contributes to a better life for vulnerable older adults with dementia living in care homes and a better work life for those who care for them. I want to thank everyone who supported my career and I want to call us to arms, call us to consider that a life that has been lived holds as much value as the life that's to be lived. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Estabrooks. Susan Horton. Susan Horton is a professor at the School of Public Health and Health Systems at the University of Waterloo. Elle est connue à l'échelle internationale pour son travail concernant l'économie de la santé globale. Her work on economics of nutrition contributed significantly to successful efforts to emphasize nutrition investments in international policy. Her current work on economics of cancer and of diagnostics aims to increase attention to these topics within the Sustainable Development Goal for Universal Health Coverage. Susan Horton. My research contributes to Canada's ongoing efforts in global health. My current work on the Lancet Commission on Diagnostics is timely in view of Canada's contribution to the COVAX facility for COVID-19. My research on the topic of benefits of nutrition has contributed to the efforts Canadian améliorer la situation nutritionnelle mondiale. Thank you for this honor, and I thank the many colleagues with whom I work. Merci. Thank you, Professor Horton. Michael Howlett. Michael Howlett is a professor in the Department of Political Science at Simon Fraser University. Il est connu pour son travail dans le domaine des études de politique in particular, celles liées à l'analyse et à l'amélioration de la conception des politiques. 
This research mobilizes insights from public administration, law, political science, public management, and political economy to help better understand policy processes and resolve policy problems and issues, receiving many awards and citations for these efforts. Michael Howlett. And I understand he's not uh, able to uh, join uh, to give a, a short speech today. Peter Jaffe. Peter Jaffe is a professor in the Faculty of Education at Western University. Il, il est un psychologue et directeur académique du Centre, du Centre for Research and Education on Violence Against Women and Children. From his research and clinical work over the past four decades, he has become one of the foremost international experts on the impact of domestic violence on victims and children and domestic homicide prevention. Peter Jaffe. For almost 50 years, I've been working to reduce and prevent family violence. I have learned a great deal from the voices and experience of survivors. I've been blessed to work with dedicated colleagues at our research center and my nominator, David Wolf. We have seen tremendous progress in the field. However, we have a long way to go to enhance public awareness and professional training. Sadly, most domestic homicides continue to be predictable and preventable. I remain confident that with continued research and advocacy, there will be fewer missed opportunities to prevent these tragedies in the future. Thank you to my family and the Royal Society of Canada for this honor. Thank you, Professor Jaffe. Bonnie Ledbeater. Bonnie Ledbeater is a professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of Victoria. Ses recherches sur la résilience, la santé et le bien-être ont fait progresser les connaissances sur la santé et le bien-être des adolescents et jeunes adultes et permis de faire le pont entre la psychologie, l'éducation, les services de santé, la santé publique et les politiques sociales. Her renowned research on preventing bullying and peer victimization led her to develop the internationally recognized WITS uh, uh, Dyer Diga programs, which are used in elementary schools across North and South America. Bonnie Ledbeater. Thank you to my mentors, my family, my collaborators, and the many students whose contributions are also recognized by this honor. Two ideals have driven my research programs. First, I've been committed to translating research into action. My studies of victimization and depression in children, for example, were the foundations for the WITS programs and for the prevention of bullying that are used across Canada. Second, I've aimed to unpack the stereotypes we hold about teenagers. Many youth who experience unwanted pregnancies, drug use and alcohol use, mental illness and bullying show strengths and resilience while others falter. My research works to understand these differences. Thank you, merci. Thank you, Professor. Kelly Lee. Kelly Lee is a professor in the Faculty of Health Sciences at Simon Fraser University. Elle est une chercheuse de renommée internationale dont les travaux portent sur les relations entre l'économie politique et la santé de la population découlant de la mondialisation. From the reform of the World Health Organization to advancing collective action on a range of shared health risks spanning communicable and non-communicable diseases, her conceptual thinking and empirical research established the foundations of global health governance scholarship helping shape the agendas of governments and international organizations. Kelly Lee. My thanks to the Royal Society for recognizing my work on governing health risks in a globalizing world. Over the past 30 years, I have studied these risks and most importantly, the need for an effective system of global health cooperation. This pandemic year in particular has demonstrated that good global health governance is critically important to all of us. My deep appreciation to the inspiring professors who taught me over the years, my wonderful colleagues and students, and most of all, my husband, Dr. Andrew Gilbor and family. Thank you again. Thank you, Professor Lee. Jennifer Llewellyn. 
Jennifer Llewellyn is a professor at the Schulich School of Law at Dalhousie University. Yogis and Ketty Chair in Human Rights Law, Donald R. Sobey Foundation Chair in Restorative Justice, and winner of the Shirk Impact Award in 2018. Elle est une intellectuelle publique de premier plan dans le domaine de la transformation de la justice et un leader mondial de la justice ré réparatrice. Her scholarship and practice have been groundbreaking for justice systems and other social institutions. Jennifer Llewellyn. I would like to express my sincere gratitude for all my relations that have contributed to my learning and my understanding. My research and work in restorative justice challenges and seeks to transform our mainstream adversarial approach to justice. It offers a way of thinking about justice that's not focused only on rules and laws, but on building and sustaining just relations among people, groups, and nations. This relational approach to justice is essential if we are to respond to our most pressing and enduring injustices in Canada and globally, to answering the calls to action on reconciliation, to ensuring Black Lives Matter, and to changing the pervasive culture of sexual and gendered violence where we live, work, learn, and pray. Thank you, Professor Llewellyn. Ara Noren Zayan. Ara Noren Zayan is a professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of British Columbia. Psychologue social, il a apporté des contributions novatrices à l'étude des origines de la religion et de l'impact psychologique de la diversité religieuse et culturelle dans le contexte actuel de mondialisation. His research appears in some of the most influential journals, and he is among the most highly cited social psychologists in the country. Ara Norenzayan. Why is that ours is a cultural species with immense diversity in beliefs and behaviors? How do our cultural ways transform our minds? How did religion as an ancient and recurrent aspect of cultures evolve and shape human diversity? How can we harness humanity's cultural and spiritual heritage to build a more sustainable future for Canada and the world? I am interested in researching these questions through international collaborations that explore the world's rich human diversity to better understand psychology. I am grateful for the support for my family, Max, Heidi and Eva and friends and from my colleagues at the University of British Columbia and students as well. I accept this honor from the Royal Society of Canada with gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Noren Zion. Leonie Sandercock. Leonie Sandercock is a professor at the School of Community and Regional Planning at the University of British Columbia. Chercheuse innovante, visionnaire et audacieuse, elle s'intéresse aux œuvres communautaires et à la pratique dans les domaines de l'urbanisme et du développement communautaire pour démêler les enjeux de notre époque, à savoir l'inégalité, la discrimination et le racisme. Through award-winning books and films, he has influenced the planning field to become more culturally fluent, addressing diversity and difference through structural change, and her partnerships with Indigenous communities model reconciliation in practice. Leonie Sandercock. My work for four decades has revolved around the potential of planning as a social justice project. But a parallel life for a while as a screenwriter in Los Angeles led me in the early 2000s to experimenting with the potential of film as a community planning intervention telling stories about the challenges faced by Indigenous communities as a result of colonization, but also telling inspiring stories of cultural resurgence and paths to Indigenous self-determination. Thank you to all of my Indigenous mentors and merci for this great honour. Thank you, Professor Sander Koch. Marlene Scardamalia. Marlene Scardamalia is a professor at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto. Ses innovations théoriques, pédagogiques et technologiques ont contribué à créer et à façonner un nouveau champ d'investigation, la construction du savoir. Celle-ci engage directement les étudiants dans les moyens 
d'avancement des connaissances dans le monde. Cardinalia's award-winning research and development spanning a global network of hubs of innovation is making knowledge creation central to education for all students at all levels. Marlene Scardamalia. Imagine schools joining other organizations devoted to making progress on major world issues. The knowledge building team has 40 years worth of evidence. Students at all levels can function as knowledge creators, not just acquirers and users of knowledge. They thrive as members of communities committed to advancing knowledge for public good. I'm grateful to the Royal Society of Canada for recognizing the work that is making this vision a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Scardamalia. Stephen Smith. Stephen Smith is a professor in the Faculty of Law at McGill University. Il est l'une des sommités mondiales en droit privé. Through his groundbreaking and influential publications on the theory of contract law, the concept of unjust enrichment, the methodology of legal scholarship, and the nature of judicial remedies, he has transformed our understanding of the law governing private interactions and of the court's role in resolving disputes arising from those interactions. Stephen Smith. Whether you are a lawyer advising a client, a judge deciding a case, a legislator contemplating law reform, or an individual involved in a lawsuit, you're likely to agree that the law should be clear, that it should treat like cases alike, and that it should be justifiable to those to whom it applies. My research asks what it means for the law to satisfy these ideals, whether the law does satisfy them, and to the extent that it doesn't, what we can do to help it to satisfy them. Thank you and merci. Thank you, Professor Smith. Laurel Weldon. Laurel Weldon is a professor in the Department of Political Science at Simon Fraser University. Elle est reconnue sur le plan international pour ses travaux sur les politiques et les politiques de genre. With her expertise in cross-national analyses of women's rights, social movements, and violence against women, she has acted as a consultant for the UN and the World Bank. Her books and articles have won many awards. Laurel Weldon. Thank you. My work on women's human rights examines how social movements drive change in law and policy. And I hope this work will continue to be useful to human rights defenders, women's rights advocates, and others seeking to make the world a better place. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do this without the support of my family, especially my husband, Aaron Hoffman, my children, Zed and Audrey, my mom, my dad, his wife, Jill, uh, my sisters and brother, my in-laws, and to supporters no longer with me, Audrey Mundell, Don Walker, Doris Hoffman, and my dissertation advisor, Iris Marion Young. Merci to the Royal Society and to SFU. Thank you, Professor Weldon. Et maintenant, science sociale. Paul Alain Beaulieu. Paul Alain Beaulieu est professeur au Department of Near and Middle Eastern Civilizations à l'Université de Toronto. His multidisciplinary approach to Assyriology and close attention to primary sources has led to groundbreaking results in the study of ancient Near Eastern civilizations. Ses publications ont changé notre approche à l'égard des civilisations du Proche-Orient ancien, notamment dans l'histoire des sciences, la vie intellectuelle, la sociolinguistique et l'histoire de l'Empire néo-babylonien du VIe siècle avant Jésus-Christ. Il est l'auteur de monographies qui servent désormais de modèle pour l'étude des religions antiques et l'histoire de la Mésopotamie. Paul Alain Beaulieu. Thank you. Uh, my research deals with the origins and development of civilization in the Near and Middle East. This is a subject of considerable importance for the humanities and social sciences, and which also impacts our involvement with the contemporary states and societies of that region. My research portes sur les origines et le développement des premières civilizations du Proche et du Moyen-Orient, un sujet d'une grande importance pour les sciences humaines et ses sociales, et qui éclaire euh, l'engagement du Canada envers les sociétés et états actuels de cette région. Merci. 
Merci, M. Beaulieu. Alain Dastou. Alain Dastou est professeur au département de marketing au HEC Montréal. He is an internationally recognized scholar in consumer behavior, marketing communication, and international marketing. Il a reçu de nombreux prix pour l'excellence de ses travaux de recherche. Deux de ses ouvrages, le projet de recherche en marketing et comportement du consommateur, sont utilisés dans plusieurs universités et cégep. Alain Dastou. Bonjour, bonsoir. Je fais de la recherche en gestion, dont euh, l'objectif est l'amélioration de la performance des entreprises. Pour les Canadiens, les entreprises performantes, ça signifie des emplois, des salaires, des impôts et des taxes qui sont investis dans les systèmes de santé, d'éducation et dans les infrastructures. Au final, cela représente une richesse et un bien-être collectif accru. So I'm very proud to contribute to this important research domain for Canada. Thank you. Merci. Merci, M. Dastou. Corinne Gendron. Corinne Gendron, du département de stratégie, responsabilité sociale et environnementale à l'Université du Québec à Montréal, mène des recherches sur la responsabilité sociale et le développement durable à partir d'une conceptualisation originale des relations entre l'environnement, l'économie et les dynamiques sociales. Her work on the economic and political elite, the structure of big firms, and new social and economic movements helps reveal the trajectories of ecological modernization. Elle s'intéresse également au rapport entre science et société et aux dynamiques d'acceptabilité sociale. Corinne Gendron. Merci. Alors, je m'intéresse dans mes recherches à la manière dont nos sociétés transforment l'environnement et tentent de s'ajuster en regard de la crise écologique qu'elles ont provoquée. Plus précisément, je m'intéresse à la configuration du système économique et à la manière dont les entreprises, les gouvernements et les citoyens s'approprient les nouveaux impératifs de la préservation des écosystèmes. Mes recherches montrent que le diagnostic de la crise environnementale et les solutions proposées ne sont pas étrangers au rapport de pouvoir. Dans cette perspective, l'équité, la justice et l'émancipation des individus et des sociétés doivent être partie intégrante de nos luttes pour sauvegarder la planète. Merci. Merci, Madame Chantron. Diane Gérin-Lajoie. Diane Gérin-Lajoie est professeure au Ontario Institute for Studies and Education à l'Université de Toronto. She is recognized for her scholarship on official language minorities in Canada and their schools. Language, yeah, Son expertise dans les domaines du rapport à l'identité chez les jeunes et chez les enseignantes et enseignants des écoles de la minorité font d'elle une pionnière dans l'analyse la, comparative des deux groupes linguistiques. Diane Gérin, la joie. Dès mes, mes premiers travaux de recherche, euh, je suis arrivée à la conclusion euh, qu'il était nécessaire de s'éloigner le micro, la, la... désolée. Oui, continue, s'il vous plaît. Oui. Euh, je suis arrivée à la, à la conclusion qu'il était nécessaire de s'éloigner des analyses à grande échelle pour décrire la réalité des minorités linguistiques afin de mieux comprendre leur évolution à travers le temps. C'est donc par le biais du rapport à l'identité et à la langue que j'étudie la situation des minorités de langue officielle au Canada, un rapport que je considère en perpétuelle mouvance et d'une grande complexité. I just want to say that it's for me, it's a, it's a great honor to be, to become member of the society and I'd like to thank uh, members of my family, colleagues and l'Université de Toronto for their uh, continued um, support. Thank you. Merci, Madame Gérin Lajoie. Pierre Noreau. Pierre Noreau est professeur à la Faculté de droit de l'Université de Montréal. 
both a legal practitioner and a jurist, he has made remarkable contributions to the field of sociology of law. Inspiré par la théorie du changement et la théorie des normes, ses travaux ont ouvert la porte au renouvellement de la recherche sur les processus d'institutionnalisation et de désinstitutionnalisation qui traversent chaque société. Pierre Noro. Une des grandes questions qui traverse les sciences sociales, c'est de savoir comment la société est-elle possible. Le droit est une modalité d'interaction qui, avec beaucoup d'autres, crée des rapports prévisibles entre les individus. De même qu'entre ces individus, des normes se créent sur la base des ajustements mutuels et sur la base d'attentes mutuelles sur la, qui construisent en fait les conditions de la stabilité sociale. C'est ce qui m'intéresse, en fait, d'étudier comment la société est possible, mais en même temps, ces procédés-là sont des procédés qui rendent parfois compliqué le changement, mais qui peuvent également être des vecteurs pour le changement social. Mes études, donc, sur, le, sur la stabilité sociale, sur l'équilibre des rapports sociaux, ont conduit à des études sur le changement et qui euh, constituent le lieu principal de mes investissements maintenant et pour les prochaines années. Merci, M Monsieur Noro. Nathalie Rinfray. Nathalie Rinfray est professeure à la Direction enseignement et recherche de l'École nationale d'administration publique. Her research focuses on leadership development as a strategy for improving government performance, women's position in non-traditional fields, and the transfer of knowledge. Ancrée dans la pratique, elle a créé un programme de recherche et de développement pour la rêve à haut potentiel du gouvernement du Québec. Ses nombreuses réalisations ont été soulignées par une trentaine de distinctions. Nathalie Raffray. In Canada, as in several industrialized countries, the massive retirements of civil servants accentuate the problem of the need to develop new leadership in order to ensure the continuity and quality of public services. Ainsi, mes travaux visent à identifier les meilleures pratiques de développement du leadership, les mettre en œuvre et documenter leurs effets auprès de la relève à haut potentiel des cadres supérieurs du gouvernement du Québec. Merci. Merci, Madame Vinfray. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, c'était les nouveaux membres de l'Académie des sciences sociales. Ladies and gentlemen, please congratulate the new fellows of the Academy of Social Sciences. Yeah. I would now like to invite Dr. Janine Brody, president of the Academy of Social Sciences, to say a few words. Okay. Welcome. My name's Janine Brody, and I'm president of the Academy of such accomplished scholars as new fellows of the Royal Society of Canada. Félicitations à tous pour votre recherche innovante, votre diligence, votre service. The induction ceremony is the high point of the Royal Society's annual meeting. But of course, this year we're meeting virtually. We all owe a great deal of thanks to the Walter House staff for being able to make this happen. As new fellows of the Royal Society, you will soon discover that the society is supported by the most talented and engaged staff. I've attended several Royal Society induction ceremonies and I've always been inspired by two things. The first is the value of recognition, not only of the new fellows, but also of families. Recognition for research excellence, for many years of hard work of diligence. Our families may not always understand what we do or why we do it, but they do know today that you are being recognized nationally as an exceptional scholar. COVID-19 has severed our relationships with family somewhat, but I really hope today that you're able to celebrate with them in some way. They have every reason to be proud of you, not only for your accomplishments, but also for being a fellow traveler on your journey to here. 
Induction ceremonies are, are also inspiring because they reflect the diversity and depth of social science research in Canada. We're celebrating here today careers that are devoted to the development of social literacy in communities, about equity and diversity, about le droit, la justice, about corporate power, about la santé au travail, violence against women and children, transnational labor rights, transformative public policy, and so much more. Your work for and with communities also refutes tired critiques of the social sciences, that they're too pie in the sky, too out there, too abstract. De pour les débuts, les sciences sociales, on produit les idées pour changement social. C'est d'autant plus le cas en période de crise comme maintenant. In the past year, the Royal Society of Canada has mobilized expertise from across Canada to address the COVID crisis. It reminds us forcefully that a random biological mutation is not isolated from the social, but instead magnifies inequalities, devastates vulnerable communities, and demands science-based public policy. Members of our academy are deeply engaged in 20-some working groups that focus on long-term care, public and mental health, indigenous and racialized communities, economic recovery, civil rights, and so much more. As new members of the Academy too, I invite you to lend your expertise to the ongoing RSC COVID response, as well as to future projects for the public good. And I also invite you to participate in the governance of this society. But today is a time for celebration, a time to value you, a time to welcome you to the Royal Society of Canada. Bravo, bon travail, et bien joué. I hope to meet you all in person next year, but until then, please keep safe and well. A bientôt. Thank you, Dr. Brody. Monsieur le Président, chers collègues, chers amis, j'ai maintenant le plaisir de vous présenter les nouveaux membres de l'Académie des sciences. It is now my pleasure to present the new fellows of the Academy of Science. Marco Amabili. Marco Amabili is a professor in the Dep Department of Mechanical Engineering at McGill University. Il a apporté des contributions exceptionnelles à la recherche sur les vibrations mécaniques et la mécanique non linéaire grâce à ses livres et articles de revue souvent cités. His specialties are non-linear vibrations, shell structures, and vascular biomechanics, and his work has been recognized by prestigious awards internationally. Marco Amabili. I had a passion for mechanics since very young age. I thank my parents for supporting my interest since that time. My research is in vibration and dynamics of structure, and presently I'm studying the dynamics of the human aortas to develop a new generation of grafts, which will improve life of patients. Thank you very much for this recognition. Thank you, Professor Amabili. I should have said that these are now the fellows from the Applied Sciences and Engineering Division. Pavel Sheben. Pavel Sheben is a professor at the National Research Council of Canada in the Advanced Electronics and Photonics Research Centre. Il est reconnu sur le plan international comme étant un leader de la photonique intégrée, avec plusieurs contributions révolutionnaires dans le domaine de la photonique sur silicium qui ont permis des avancées fondamentales dans de multiples technologies. His invention of metamaterial waveguide has revolutionized integrated photonics and launched a new research field. Pavel Sheben. Deeply honored by this recognition. And I have been investigating how to build photonic instruments on tiny chips similar to those that are powering our computers and smartphones. 
Photonic chips have revolutionized the way we transmit data in telecommunication networks and data centers and enable the internet as we know it today. Other applications are in biomedical sensing, quantum devices or LIDARs to navigate the autonomous cars. Je suis très reconnaissant envers mes collègues étudiants avec qui j'ai eu la chance de travailler. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Dr. Shaban. Zhang Ching Chen. Zhang Ching Chen is a professor at the Schulich School of Engineering at the University of Calgary. Reconnu sur le plan international en génie chimique et pétrolier, il est titulaire de la chaire de recherche industrielle um, Alberta Innovates Energy Simulation. His exceptional work has led to the establishment of a prominent collaborative consortium and a spin-off company. Among his numerous accolades, he has received NSERC Synergy Award for Innovation and the Fields Kames Prize. Zhang Ching Chang. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, I uh, thank RCA for the honor, and I would like to thank uh, those who have supported me. Uh, first of all, uh, my parents, my family, my wife, and my children. Second, uh, the University of Calgary, the Shirk School of Engineering, and my department, the Chemical and the Petroleum uh, Engineering. I uh, uh, thought I would like to thank all my uh, research sponsors, such as uh, Energy Simulation, ASOC, and Alberta Innovate. And lastly, but not the least, all my uh, student, uh, postdoc fellows, research associate, collaborators, my mentors, and my colleagues at the University of Calgary. Uh, thank you, Mosi. Thank you, Professor Chen. Abdul Motalib El Sadiq. Abdul Motalib El Sadiq is a professor at the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at the University of Ottawa. Professor Eminent et leader mondial primé dans le domaine de la recherche en informatique et en génie, il a apporté des contributions fondamentales en informatique et communication multimédia. His research in haptic audio visual environments, together with his pioneering work in digital twins and haptics biometrics, have reinvigorated multimedia research worldwide and significantly impacted the way human-machine interactions are performed. Abdul Motalib El Sadi. Je suis un rêveur et un ingénieur. My goal is to explore and develop the world's first human digital twin to predict the health and fitness challenges before they happen. Words cannot describe my gratitude to my mom and dad who taught me everything is achievable. Many thanks to my family, wife, four children, and all those who crossed my path. Nothing would have happened without the blessing of the Almighty. O oh Lord, enhance my knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Al Sadiq. Jin Zhang. Jin Zhang is a professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Western University. Il est un expert de renommée internationale en matière de commande de systèmes tolérants aux défaillances, de systèmes de commande et de mesures pour les centrales nucléaires et de micro-réseaux d'énergie renouvelable. His pioneering works have fundamentally revolutionized approaches to achieving high reliability in safety critical systems, safer nuclear power plants, and more effective utilization of renewable energy. Uh, nuclear energy accounts for 15% energy resources for electrical power generation in Canada and over 60% for Ontario. It is one of the best uh, uh, emission free energy resources in fighting against the global warming. However, the safety of nuclear power plants is uh, often a major concern in the general public. Uh, the goal of my research is to make nuclear power plants safer through advanced instrumentation control systems, 
the ultimate objective of my work is to contribute to Canada's goal to achieve net zero emissions by 2050 through safer use of nuclear energy. Thank you very much for this honor. Thank you, Professor Zhang. Amar Mohanty. Amar Mohanty is a professor in the Department of Plant Agriculture and School of Engineering at the University of Guelph. Il est un pionnier dans le domaine des biomatériaux avancés. Il a consacré sa vie au développement des, de matériaux biosourcés dans le but de réduire l'impact environnemental des plastiques. His award-winning compostable packaging and green automotive parts have been commercially adopted in global markets with lower greenhouse gas emissions and reduced waste, representing a model for realizing the circular economy concept. Amar Mohanty. Thank you. I am truly humbled and honored to be in the fine company of the Royal Society of Canada Fellows. We all know that world needs to mitigate the climate change. My lifelong work has been focused on the fundamental challenges of creating bio-based materials by using sustainable resources, which can help for a better planet. I acknowledge the support of my student and team members who have contributed to the discoveries. I'm also thankful for my um, amazing spouse and co-worker, Professor Misra, and colleagues for their unconditional support. A huge thanks to University of Guelph for nominating me. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Professor Mohanty. Slobodan Simonovic. Slobodan Simonovic is a professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Western University. Il a apporté des contributions fondamentales au développement d'approches d'ingénierie relatives à la planification, la conception et la gestion de systèmes complexes de ressources acatiques. In the search for sustainable and robust physical and societal solutions based on stakeholders' value systems and ethical principles, he has utilized multiple approaches for addressing subject subjective and objective uncertainties in managing water resources systems. Slobodan Simonovic. Thanks, my wife and family for support, my students and colleagues for collaboration, and the Royal Society for this honor. Water is an essential part of all life on Earth. I am water, we are all water. 60% of our body is water. In Canada, water is in crisis. This crisis is one of water governance. Essentially, it's caused by ways in which we mismanage water. I devoted my professional life with the highest level of stick to itiveness to raise the awareness and empower people to deal with this crisis. Thank you, merci. Thank you, Professor Simonovic. David Zhang. David Zhang is a professor at the School of Data Science at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Shenzhen. Il est un expert mondial de premier plan et un pionnier de la biométrie. Il a reçu une reconnaissance internationale pour ses brillantes réalisations contribution important. His work has been very widely cited. He is also a Croucher Senior Research Fellow and a Life Fellow of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers and the International Association for Pattern Recognition, David Zhang. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I'm very happy to receive this honor. In the future, I will do my best to my research and uh, contribute more to Canada and the world. Also, I'd like to thank all the person who helped and supported me before, especially uh, uh, my wife and family during the past uh, 40 years. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> So now we move on to Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Sciences. Sarah Jane Barnes. Sarah Jane Barnes is a professor in the Département des Sciences Appliquées at the Université du Québec à Chicoutimi. Elle est 
une géologue spécialisée dans l'étude de la composition des roches et des minéraux dans et autour des gisements métallifères. For her work, she has been awarded a Tier 1 Canada Research Chair, the Mineralogical Association of Canada's top medal, and the Geological Association of Canada's medal for the study of ore deposits, Sarah Jane Barnes. Transition to the green economy will require solar panels, electric vehicles, wind turbines, and an interconnectivity to control the flow of green energy. This requires more of the elements such as vanadium, platinum, tellurium, and many others. In our laboratory, we have developed specialized methods to determine the concentrations of these critical metals at very low concentrations to very high levels, information which is used in exploration for these ore deposits or in answering more fundamental questions, such as how does the moon form? And everyone's favorite question, what really happened to the dinosaurs? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Barnes. Paul Del Giorgio. Paul Del Giorgio est professeur au département des sciences biologiques à l'Université du Québec à Montréal. He is an aquatic ecologist and biogeochemist recognized for his seminal contributions to the understanding of aquatic microbial food webs and of energy and carbon fluxes in freshwater and marine ecosystems. Ses recherches intégratives dans le biome boréal ont contribué à une réévaluation radicale des liens aquatiques terrestres et de, du rôle des eaux continentales, y compris les réservoirs hydroélectriques dans le cycle global du carbone. Paul Del Giorgio. L'eau est un élément fondamental du paysage canadien. Il y a des millions de lacs, rivières, marécages et de nombreux réservoirs dans notre territoire. Our research explores the carbon footprint of these countless lakes, rivers and reservoirs and tries to understand what drives these aquatic carbon sinks and sources um, and how they may shift under scenarios of future change. I'm truly humbled by becoming a, a, a fellow of the society and I acknowledge the UQAM, my institution, and thank the many colleagues, friends, and students who have shaped my career. And I certainly wouldn't be sitting here if it, if it weren't for the support and love of my partner, Paola Conde, and our daughters, Francesca and Olivia. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Monsieur Del Giorgio. Ian Mann. Ian Mann is a professor in the Department of Physics at the University of Alberta. Il est un expert en sciences de l'espace et en météorologie spatiale de renommée mondiale. Ses travaux ont entraîné de nouvelles connaissances sur la radiation spatiale extrême et la dynamique de l'espace circonterrestre. Mann's leadership at the UN promotes the translation of research to policy excellence during international efforts to mitigate extreme space weather impacts, Ian Mann. It's my great honor to be elected as a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. I'd like to extend my sincere thanks to my wife, to my mom and dad, uh, and also to the many students and researchers who it's been my pleasure to work and collaborate with in space research over many years. My research has focused on understanding space weather arising from living in our sometimes violent neighbor, the sun, our star. I look forward to promoting an expanded future utilization of space to address the challenges facing our planet in partnership with colleagues in the Royal Society of Canada. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Mann. Amanda Vincent. Amanda Vincent is a professor at the Institute for the Oceans and Fisheries at the University of British Columbia. Elle est un moteur, moteur pour la conservation des océans, ancré dans sa spécialité, les hippocampes. Elle a été la première biologiste à étudier ces animaux extraordinaires sous l'eau. Her project Seahorse Team finds solutions for coastal marine ecosystems, linking research and management to create protected areas fisheries regulations, and global wildlife trade policy. Amanda Vincent. Starting with seahorses, those quirky little fishes with male pregnancy, my team has married research, advocacy, and action 
to make real gains in ocean conservation around the world. Much also needs to be done in Canada. Le Canada est un pays océanique. 40% de la superficie de notre pays est constituée d'océans. Prenons notre océan dans nos cœurs comme une question de bonne citoyenneté and use our voices and votes for ocean health and ocean justice. I am deeply grateful to my parents, my children, Andaya and Kian, UBC, and my Project Seahorse Conservation family. Merci. Thank you, Professor Vincent. Douglas Wallace. Douglas Wallace is a professor in the Department of Oceanography at Dalhousie University. Il est un océanographe qui utilise des observations de distribution chimique pour élucider les processus biogéochimiques complexes qui relient l'océan et l'atmosphère. He introduced several approaches and tools with long-lasting impact on understanding marine biogeochemistry and its connection with climate, especially with respect to the uptake of carbon dioxide and oxygen by the ocean. Douglas Wallace. Bonjour à tous. My work focuses on the, the breathing of the ocean. What's that, you might ask? Well, the ocean breathes, or at least it exchanges gases with the atmosphere, a, a bit like we do. My group's work has helped to measure the extra CO2 that's been breathed in by the ocean and which has helped to mitigate uh, climate change. And also, the ocean also breathes in and breathes out oxygen. And the supply of oxygen to the deep sea, which is so critical for life there, is we found that it's very, very sensitive to climate change. So thanks to my amazing research team and to my amazing family and the Royal Society of Canada. Thank you, Professor Wallace. And now the life sciences, les sciences de la vie. Jean Addington. Jean Addington is a professor in the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Calgary. Elle est une chercheuse de renommée internationale dans les domaines de la schizophrénie, de la psychose précoce et de la prévention précoce des maladies mentales graves. Her work has made significant contributions to the understanding and development of preventative strategies and early intervention in psychiatry, especially for young people at risk of developing psychosis and other serious mental illnesses. Jean Addington. Uh, most serious mental illnesses begin in adolescence. My research focuses on the early identification of those young people who are at significant risk of developing psychosis. And secondly, developing treatment so that we can intervene and help these young people as soon as possible. However, these efforts cannot be accomplished without the work of the several worldwide consortiums in which I work. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Addington. Cheryl Aerosmith is a professor at the Princess Margaret Cancer Center, Department of Medical Biophysics, University of Toronto. Elle est une scientifique biomédicale reconnue sur le plan international pour ses contributions pionnières dans le domaine multidisciplinaire de la découverte de médicaments guidés par la structure. Co-founder of the Structural Genomics Consortium, she leads its transformative open science program, catalyzing discovery of new medicines. Her research has developed, exploited, and distributed thousands of unencumbered, unencumbered chemical probes, revolutionizing creation of precision medicines for multiple diseases, especially cancer. Cheryl Aerosmith. We are working towards a world where people will have access to personalized medicines that treat a person's individual genetic makeup and specific disease. This requires a large pharmacopoeia of many medicines for doctors to choose from, but this is currently lacking. We're using open science to discover starting points for new drugs to large numbers of drug targets. We share these reagents freely with doctors and scientists from around the world to catalyze the discovery and development of personalized medicine. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Aerosmith. Guy Boivin. Guy Boivin est professeur au département de microbiologie, infectiologie et immunologie à l'Université Laval. His laboratory focuses on the pathogenesis, treatment, and prevention of viral diseases, 
performing landmark studies on the incidence, virulence, and transmission of drug-resistant viruses. Il a été le premier à décrire les manifestations cliniques du metanumovirus humain, pour lequel il a mis au point plusieurs vaccins et antiviraux, qui voisins. Mon groupe de recherche a été très actif durant la pandémie de grippe H1N1 en 2009 et durant la pandémie actuelle de la COVID-19. We have performed studies looking at virus transmission within families during pandemic and also determined the rate of reinfection in healthcare professionals. Importantly, we have designed new treatment modalities for emerging viruses, including Zika virus and COVID-19. À travers les activités de la Société royale du Canada, je m'engage à contribuer au bien-être et à la santé de tous les Canadiens et Canadiennes. Merci, M. Boivin. Kim Boycott, professor of pediatrics at the University of Ottawa, clinical geneticist at the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario and senior scientist at the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario Research, is a visionary in employing genomics to understand molecular mechanisms of rare disease. Elle dirige Care for Rare Canada, une plateforme de renommée internationale qui a déterminé la cause génétique de plusieurs maladies rares et découvert beaucoup de nouveaux gènes. She also leads international initiatives to advance global cooperation and data sharing in rare disease. Kim Boycott. Thank you, Sheila. There are more than 5,000 rare genetic diseases and likely another 5,000 that have not yet even been discovered. Patients and families living with a rare genetic disease experience significant challenges with diagnostic clarity and almost none of the currently recognized 5,000 diseases have a targeted treatment. My clinical and research activity is focused on improving the diagnosis and treatment of rare diseases using the power of genomics and global data sharing. In this way, we try to help families living with rare disease live their best lives across Canada and around the world. Thank you to my husband, my children and family for their unwavering support, to my amazing research team, and to our Canadian networks for providing remarkable opportunities for discovery with such a spirit of national collaboration. And finally, to the Royal Society for this tremendous honor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Boycott. Jacques Côté. Jacques Côté est professeur au département de biologie moléculaire, biochimie médicale et pathologie à l'Université Laval. As Canada Research Chair and Director of Oncology Research at CHU de Québec, Université Laval, he is an international leader on chromatin structure and function, histone modifications and molecular epigenetics. Il a fait des découvertes fondamentales sur les, mé les mécanismes moléculaires régulant l'expression des gènes et l'intégrité du génome, démontrant comme la cellule reconfigure les nucléosomes, l'unité de base des chromosomes, contrôle à l'accès à l'ADN et émet des signaux épigénétiques. Jacques Côté. Merci, Sheila. Notre recherche fondamentale met à une, mène à une meilleure compréhension des mécanismes moléculaires de la vie. It dissects our cellular chromosome and modulate it in order to express the right parts of the genetic material, specific genes, in specific tissues or in response to environmental, environmental cues. Ces mécanismes sont aussi importants pour maintenir et réparer le matériel génétique durant la croissance et suite à des dommages. Thank you to my colleague, my family and nominators. Merci beaucoup pour cet honneur. Merci, Monsieur Côté. Karen Davis. Karen Davis is a professor in the Department of Surgery and Institute of Medical Science at the University of Toronto. Elle est reconnue sur le plan international pour ses recherches neuroscientifiques pionnières et influentes utilisant l'électrophysiologie, la psychophysique et les approches d'imagerie cérébrale qui ont permis d'améliorer notre compréhension des mécanismes sous-jacents à la douleur et sa modulation. She has advanced the pain and neuroscience fields and advocated 
for strategies and neuroethics policy that impact people living with chronic pain. Karen Davis. I am honored to be inducted into the Royal Society of Canada. Chronic pain affects one in five Canadians with tremendous personal and societal costs. My research seeks to develop more personalized approaches to treat pain within an ethical framework given the new advances in brain imaging technologies for detection, prediction, and pain management planning. Thanks to my amazing trainees, collaborators, and mentors in Toronto and Johns Hopkins, and to my mother, late father, family, and my partner, Susan, for their encouragement, insight, inspiration, and humor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Davis. Paul Franklin. Paul Franklin from Neurosciences and Mental Health at the Hospital for Sick Children Research Institute at the University of Toronto is recognized as a world leader in memory research. Ses études ont révélé les processus neurobiologiques sous-jacents à notre apprentissage, nos souvenirs et parfois nos oublis. Knowledge gained from his research provides a foundation for the development of better treatments for memory-related disorders. Paul Franklin. I am very much honored to be inducted as a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. In my lab at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, we've been studying how memory works and in particular, how the brain forgets. In receiving this recognition, I also recognize all the brilliant um, contributions of trainees that have worked in my lab over the past 17 years. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Franklin. Yan Te Gan. Yan Te Gan is senior research scientist and principal investigator with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. Il a dirigé une équipe qui a développé une suite intégrée des technologies agricoles. The wide adoption of the novel suite has fundamentally shifted Western Canadian agriculture into a more sustainable and resilient system, having significant eco-environmental and socio-economic impact. Yang Te Gan. Uh, I don't believe he's here, so I will continue. Andrew Gonzalez. Andrew Gonzalez is a professor in the Department of Biology at McGill University. Il est reconnu pour ses recherches sur les causes et les conséquences des modifications de la biodiversité. He combines theoretical and experimental approaches to reveal how human impacts such as habitat loss, climate change, and pollution drive rapid biodiversity loss and ecosystem degradation, but also how these impacts can be mitigated. Andrew Gonzalez. Thank you. The loss of biological diversity is one of the great environmental crises of our time. My research is focused on understanding how and why this is happening in Canada and around the world. As a fellow of the Royal Society, I'm dedicated to finding and implementing solutions needed to stem the loss of biodiversity and restore the integrity of the ecosystems that we all rely upon. I would like to thank the Royal Society for this extraordinary honor. Research is always a collaborative effort, so I'm grateful to the many brilliant students and colleagues I have worked with and for the support I received from McGill University. And of course, to my friends and my family for their unconditional support and love. I could not have achieved this without you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Professor Gonzalez. Scott Hinch. Scott Hinch is a professor in the Department of Forest and Conservation Sciences at the University of British Columbia. Il est un scientifique de renommée internationale et un éducateur primé qui intègre de manière unique la physiologie, l'écologie, le comportement, la génomique et les sciences sociales dans l'étude et la conservation du saumon du Pacifique. His pioneering work combining large-scale telemetry tracking with biopsy sampling has transformed our understanding of how climate change, fisheries, and land water management affects sustainability of salmon populations. His collaborations and leadership with social scientists, stakeholders, and First Nations have benefited fisheries management. Scott Hinch. Thank you. 
This recognition is due in large part to my past and present grad students and postdocs. Before one becomes a leader, success is about growing yourself. But once you become a leader, success should be about growing others. I'm standing on the shoulders of many giants and firmly believe it's important to put your students on your shoulders now. I urge my colleagues and other research leaders to do what you can to lift up and elevate your students and postdocs and give them diverse and abundant responsibilities, not just in research, but also in leading communication and extension of science so these young people can develop rapidly into the next group of leaders and future members of the Royal Society. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hint. Tina Jocelyn. Tina Jocelyn from Neurosciences and Mental Health at the Hospital for Sick Children Research Institute, University of Toronto, is a world leader in investigating how the brain encodes, stores, and uses information. Ses études ont ouvert de nouvelles voies et ont modifié la perception des neurosciences par rapport à la mémoire. The fundamental insights gained by her research into the basic memory processes in rodents may translate into superior ways of treating or preventing devastating human brain disorders. Sheena Jocelyn. Thank you, Sheila. I'm delighted and beyond honored to be inducted into the Royal Society of Canada. And only a few minutes after my husband, Paul Franklin, was also inducted, he beat me by this much. I would really like to acknowledge the contributions of my mentors, my family, including my daughter, Charlotte, and um, especially my, the amazing trainees, past and present in my lab. And I just wanna to say to the rest of my fellow inductees, cheers everyone, merci. Thank you, Professor Jocelyn. Ruma Koka. Ruma Koka is a professor in the Department of Medical Biophysics at the University of Toronto. Elle est une chef de file de renommée internationale dans les domaines de l'homoéostasie tissulaire et des niches de cellules de touche. Her basic discoveries have revolutionized our understanding of cancer biology, allowed development of new strategies to block aggressive disease, and fueled breast cancer chemo prevention trials. Ruma Koka. It's an honor to be amongst the inductees today. In my breast cancer program, we began to challenge our efforts into prevention to address the gap that exists for high-risk breast cancer patients. With hard work from my amazing team, their big thinking, and support from my colleagues, we are making excellent headway in this challenging area. I want to thank them and also my fabulous family for their love and support. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Koka. Mark Loeb. Mark Loeb is a professor in the Faculty of Health Sciences at McMaster University. Il est reconnu sur le plan international dans le domaine des essais cliniques et des études épidémiologiques sur les maladies infectieuses. He is distinguished for his work on influenza vaccination and herd immunity in Canadian Hutterite communities for respiratory mask protection against influenza and for clinical trials on prevention and management of infections in nursing home residents. Mark Loeb. Thank you, Sheila. My research currently includes conducting a longitudinal cohort study of COVID-19 in Hutterite colonies in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Our aim is to better understand the transmission of this virus from children to adults, to understand the role of pre-existing immunity to protect both individuals and entire communities, and also to better understand the effect of temporal immunity following influenza infection and the molecular uh, epidemiology of the virus. So thank you for this recognition. Thank you, Professor Loeb. Kevin McCann. Kevin McCann is a professor in the Department of Integrative Biology at the University of Guelph. Il est un théoricien de l'écologie qui s'intéresse au rôle joué par les structures biologiques dans la pérennité et le fonctionnement des écosystèmes. His research has played a leading role in understanding the role species interaction strengths play in mediating the stable functioning of food webs. Kevin McCann. Hi, uh, my name is Kevin McCann. I want to start by thanking my family for their support throughout my scientific journey as they've helped in enormous ways many, many times. I'm both a mathematical ecologist and a field ecologist who broadly studies how global change is impacting the resilience and sustainability of the ecosystem. 
My current work is intimately tied to global food production via agriculture and fisheries and includes researching the sweet spots for producing food while still maintaining the biodiversity we rely on. Thank you and merci beaucoup. Thank you, Professor McCann. David Moore. David Moore is a senior scientist in the Faculty of Medicine at the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute. Chercheur parmi les plus cités au monde, il a consacré la majeure partie de sa carrière à l'amélioration des revues scientifiques du point de vue des auteurs, des éditeurs et des pairs évaluateurs. From his efforts, he established international standards used by hundreds of academic journals for the complete and transparent reporting of biomedical research, particularly randomized trials, consort, and systematic review, PRISMA. David Moore. Thank you. I thought researchers knew how to report their research. Not so, as COVID-19 research has demonstrated. I spent most of my academic career trying to do something that I initially thought was simple namely getting researchers to be more transparent about their research methods and results. My current research foci are one, helping to reduce research waste, and two, increase the trustworthiness of research through open scholarship. Thank you, Professor Moore. John Reynolds. John Reynolds is a professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at Simon Fraser University. He is distinguished by his research of quality mondial, establishing des ponts entre l'écologie, l'évolution, l'évolution et la biologie de la conservation. He has used a combination of theoretical analyses, phylogenetically based comparative analyses, and extensive field research to understand variation among species in extinction risk, including links to sustainable exploitation. John Reynolds. Thank you, Sheila. The biodiversity crisis is one of the greatest challenges facing Canada and the world. We are a part of the planet's ecosystems and their impairment is our loss. My research aims to understand conservation issues and extinction risk faced by a wide variety of species in changing landscapes and seascapes. I must say I've been really privileged to be able to work at universities like SFU that have encouraged me to speak out about these issues and engage with policymakers and the general public to find solutions based on our research. So I'm delighted to join the Royal Society of Canada and I want to thank my family and my students and various collaborators over the years who've made this honor, honor possible. Merci. Thank you, Professor Reynolds. Lisa Saxida. Lisa Saxida is a professor in the Department of Physiology and Pharmacology at Western University. Elle a fourni des contributions importantes théoriques et expérimentales à notre compréhension des fondements neurobiologiques et des processus cognitifs. Her collaborative and interdisciplinary approach allows her to span multiple levels of analysis from molecule to behavior to answer fundamental questions about the brain in health and disease and how answers to these questions can best be translated to the clinic. Lisa Saxida. Neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's contribute to reduced quality of life for millions of patients and their caregivers. In addition to being devastating to the individual, these diseases are a major public health challenge. And with our aging population, the number of people affected is increasing at a breakneck pace. My work focuses on developing an improved understanding of these and other brain disorders at the molecular and circuit level and linking this meaningfully to impact on aspects of cognition, such as memory, attention, reasoning, and judgment to facilitate new and better treatment options. Thank you to my collaborator and husband, Tim Bussey, who has built this research program with me over the last 20 years, to our outstanding trainees and collaborators past and present, and of course, to the Royal Society for this tremendous honor. Thank you, Professor Saxida. Mark Strauss. Mark Strauss is a professor in the Department of Geosciences at the University of Calgary. Ses nombreuses contributions en écologie microbienne, en biogéochimie 
et en biotechnologie environnementale ont suscité une révision majeure du concept du cycle biogéochimique mondial de l'azote. He is currently building on his ecology and engineering expertise to create a feasible, sustainable, net negative carbon dioxide emissions biotechnology for counteracting climate change. Mark Strauss. Is Mark Strauss here? The housekeepers, oh, I'm, I'm unmuted, no, uh, of our planets, taking care of the recycling of water, air, and soil. My research and expertise addresses climate change. My question is, can climate change be reversed? As a fellow of the Royal Society, I hope to help our society in the encounter with this challenging and sometimes divisive topic. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Strauss. Michael Taylor. Michael Taylor from the Hospital for Sick Children Research Institute, University of Toronto, is a recognized world leader in brain tumor research. Ses recherches portent principalement sur l'étude génétique et moléculaire de deux tumeurs pédiatriques cérébrales malignes, le médulloblastome et l'épandidome. His efforts have improved the level of collaboration, raised the quality, and increased the pace of brain tumor research around the globe, keeping Canada at the forefront of cancer innovation while significantly impacting treatment for children around the world. Michael Taylor. Thank you. Um, the most common cause of non-accidental death among Canadian children is cancer. And the worst of those cancers is brain cancer. My group uses tools from molecular biology, genomics, and developmental biology to study those cancers and the very, very early developing human brain. We hope to figure out how the, the normally developing human brain goes awry, resulting in these childhood brain tumors so that someday we can prevent them, and if not that, at least treat them properly. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Ming Sound Chao. Ming Sound Chao is a senior scientist at the Princess Margaret Cancer Center, University Health Network, and University of Toronto. Il est the chef de file reconnu sur le plan international pour ses recherches translationnelles et ses travaux sur les biomarqueurs relatifs au cancer du poumon. His work contributed to establishment of molecular prognostic and predictive biomarkers in personalized medicine and precision cancer therapy and pioneered development of novel experimental models using patient tumors to study cancer biology and new therapies. Ming Sound Zhao. During the last decade, cancer care has undergone a revolution. Molecular biomarkers are the foundations of personalized and precision cancer medicine. New biomarker discoveries and translating them into clinical practice is a team science. For my election to this prestigious society, I am grateful to many trainees and collaborators nationally and internationally, and my wife and family for their supports. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chow. Rui Wang. Rui Wang is a professor in the Department of Biology at York University. Il est un pionnier dans le domaine de la biologie et de la médecine de sulfure d'hydrogène. He identified, he identified H2S as an endothelium-derived relaxing and hyperpolarizing factor that dilates resistance arter arteries and controls blood pressure. He has established the critical roles that H2S plays in the pathogenesis of hypertension, angiogenesis, atherosclerosis, diabetes, and asthma. Rui Wang. Hello. In this virtue ceremony, you cannot smell it if I fart now. What makes the farting gas so smelly is a molecule known as a hydrogen sulfide. The same molecule make me famous or infamous and help me inducted into RSC with honor and privilege. Thanks to more than 120 research trainees in my team who have made our discoveries possible. And thanks to my family who has endured 
and tolerating me smelly or not. Thank you, Professor Wang. Zina Werb. Zina Werb passed away following her election to the society. Zina Werb est décédée par la suite de son élection à la société. Zina Werb was a professor in the Department of Anatomy at the University of California, San Francisco. Elle a effectué des découvertes originales et révolutionnaires sur la base moléculaire et cellulaire des rôles micro-environnementaux de la matrice extracellulaire dans la régulation des tissus qui ont conduit à une nouvelle compréhension mécanique de la fonction normale et pathologique des tissus. She pioneered the concept that extracellular proteolysis is a central mechanism of altering signaling in stem cell biology and in the inflammatory response during cancer progression and metastasis with a particular focus on breast development with breast cancer, Zina Werb. We now move on to mathematical and physical sciences. David Bryce. David Bryce is a professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biomolecular Sciences at the University of Ottawa. L'un des chimistes physiques les plus créatifs et les plus prolifiques du Canada, il est une sommité de renommée internationale en matière de spectroscopie de résonance magnétique nucléaire et d'interaction électrophile dans les solides. His paradigm-shifting discoveries in analysis and in interpretation of spectral data have led to breakthroughs in understanding of solid materials, pharmaceuticals, and biomolecules. David Bryce. Merci et bonsoir. It's a pleasure, sincere pleasure, to be uh, inducted as a fellow of the Royal Society in this memorable year. Uh, my research is in the area of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, and it's great fun. I use NMR spectroscopy to study the structure, dynamics, and properties of a range of solid materials. This work benefits from having access to the strongest magnetic fields available. Some applications of our work, which are of benefit to Canadians, lie in the characterization of pharmaceutical polymorphs and in understanding molecular machines. The work for which I'm being recognized is made possible thanks to a large number of dedicated students and trainees I've had in my lab. So thank you to all of them, and thank you to my family. Hi, Mom and Dad. Uh, thanks, and merci. Thank you, Professor Bryce. Kathleen Crudden. Kathleen Crudden is a professor in the Department of Chemistry at Queen's University and Nagoya University. Elle a apporté des contributions durables au domaine de la chimie organique et de la science des matériaux. She has employed the principles of her organometallic chemistry to develop catalytic transformations of importance to pharmaceutical research and to develop novel techniques for the formation of organic monolayers on metal surfaces. Kathleen Crudden. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here tonight. My research blurs the line between apparently disparate parts of the periodic table, using metals to make organic molecules and using organic molecules to modify metal surfaces. This work has applications in pharmaceutical synthesis, semiconductor patterning, and novel nanomaterials for cancer treatment. My work would be impossible without the help of outstanding collaborators, a fearless and brilliant group of grad students and postdocs, and an incredibly supportive family. My work builds on the foundation of knowledge I gained during graduate studies with exceptional mentors, and the interest in the world around me instilled in me as a child. Thanks all. Thank you, Professor Crudden. René Doyon, et, René, Doyon. René Doyon est professeur au département de physique à l'Université de Montréal. He is one of the world's foremost experts on exoplanetary research and an internationally renowned leader in astronomical instrumentation. Le développement de nombreux instruments sur des télescopes spatiaux et terrestres a conduit à des découvertes révolutionnaires dans le domaine des exoplanètes et des naines brunes, notamment la toute première image directe d'un système exoplanétaire, et a pos positionné le Canada comme un acteur clé dans la recherche de la vie au-delà de notre système solaire. René Doyon. 
My research involves the development of advanced technologies that, with time, find their way into our daily lives through numerous surprising applications. The long-term goal of my work is to determine whether life exists beyond our solar system on exoplanets. We may be a few decades away from this, this, this answer. L'étude de ces nouveaux mondes nous donne une perspective et un contexte plus large pour apprécier le caractère unique et la fragilité de notre belle planète Terre. Merci à ma famille, mes étudiants, mes amis, mes collègues, l'Université de Montréal et la Société royale du Canada. Merci, M. Doyon. Laura Ferrarese. Laura Ferrarese is a principal research officer at the Hertzberg Astronomy and Astrophysics Research Centre at the National Research Council of Canada. Astrophysicienne de renommée internationale, elle est reconnue pour ses recherches originales et révolutionnaires sur les trous noirs supermassifs l'âge de l'univers et l'évolution des galaxies. Her observations have transformed understanding of galaxy structure and evolution, paving the way for exploration of today's key cosmic mysteries, notably the nature of dark energy and dark matter. Laura Ferrarese. Good day, everyone. Um, I don't see myself, but I'll go ahead anyway. Um, Canada has access to the most advanced astronomical facilities on Earth and in space. And it is thanks to them that I have been able to address questions such as how do galaxies evolve? How can the supermassive black holes that lurk at their center shape the universe around us? I consider myself lucky to work in a field where every day can bring a new unexpected discovery and to have the opportunity through my research to excite the public in Canada and abroad. I'd like to thank my, the Royal Society for this honor and my mom and my dad, my family and my husband for their support throughout my career. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ferrarese. Charles Gale. Charles Gale is professor of the Department of Physics at Université McGill. He is world renowned for his theoretical studies of strongly interacting matter under extreme conditions of temperature and of density. Ses travaux de premier plan ont contribué au fondement théorique du programme de recherche en physique des ions lourds. Ses résultats concernant l'émission électromagnétique de la matière dense et chaude ont motivé et guidé plusieurs générations d'expériences partout dans le monde. Charles Gale. Hello, I'm a theoretical physicist working on subatomic physics. And most of the work of my group lies at the interface between nuclear and particle physics. Le Canada demeure un chef de file dans la recherche en physique subatomique. En effet, le domaine a débuté à l'Université McGill avec les travaux historiques d'Ernest Rutherford au début du 20e siècle. J'aime croire que mes travaux en physique théorique aident et supportent ceux de mes collègues expérimentateurs, canadiens et autres, qui sont actifs dans les grands laboratoires partout dans le monde, comme Triumph à Vancouver et le CERN à Genève. J'aimerais remercier ma famille pour l'honneur qui m'est dû aujourd'hui et j'aimerais remercier mes collègues, mes étudiants et la Société royale. Thank you. Merci, M. Gale. Mark Halpern. Mark Halpern is a professor in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of British Columbia. Il effectue des mesures qui ont affiné notre compréhension du contenu et de la dynamique de l'univers. Measurements showing little distortion of the cosmic microwave background spectrum established that the universe was in thermal equilibrium when it was 10 days old, and that the universe is spatially flat, comprised of 70% dark energy with dark invisible matter substantially outweighing baryonic matter. Mark Halpern. Thank you. Measuring the roles of dark matter and dark energy, we've established that 96% of the universe is not made out of the light and atoms that make up all of human experience. By following our own data to this surprising conclusion, we've exhibited a, a socially important uh, a behavior. We have allowed our data to determine our beliefs instead of doing it the other way around. I want to thank, I'm deeply grateful to my family who share with me a value and a joy in learning from closely observing the world around us. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Halpern. Askold Chovansky. Askold Chovansky is a professor in the Department of Mathematics at the University of Toronto. 
Il est un scientifique de renommée, renommée internationale, dont la recherche a eu un grand impact sur les communautés mathématiques et informatiques. He created topological Galois theory, a totally new branch of classical Galois theory, and the highly original theory of funomials in complexity theory. He is one of the creators of the theories of Newton polyhedra and of Newton Okonkov bodies, as called Hovansky. Um, I don't see why. Okay. I, I would like to thank all my colleagues and students for very interesting and exciting collaboration. I thank members of my family for their love and constant support. I'm very grateful to my teachers and especially to Vladimir Igorevich Arnold under whose supervision I made my first mathematical discoveries. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hovansky. Todd Lowry. Todd Lowry is a professor in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Alberta. He is the de premier plan au Canada. Il est reconnu mondialement comme un chef de file en synthèse de molécules pouvant sonder le rôle biologique des liquides. His pioneering contributions include novel methods for assembling some of the most complex carbohydrates ever synthesized, enabling understanding of the role of carbohydrates in diseases such as tuberculosis with applications in new drugs, vaccines, and diagnostics. Todd Lowry. Projects in my lab apply unique chemical structures to the microbial world to solve important human health challenges. I'm especially proud of our work in improving diagnostics for tuberculosis, a disease that remains a worldwide health threat. I should note that I myself don't do anything. The success we've had is due to the contributions of a dedicated team of coworkers who I've been privileged to work with over the past 25 years. I'm also grateful for the unwavering support of the Department of Chemistry and the Faculty of Science at the University of Alberta. Thank you, Professor Lowry. Boyan Moyar. Boyan Moyar is a professor in the Department of Mathematics at Simon Fraser University. Expert mondial en théorie des graphes, il a contribué à des domaines fondamentaux des mathématiques discrètes. His deep and fundamental results have advanced algebraic, structural, and topological graph theory and influenced theoretical computing, mathematical chemistry, and other fields. Boyan Moyar. Mathematics is the language of science, uh, existing and emerging science. In my research in graph theory, I discover bits and pieces that help understand the world around us. Usually this happens at a highly theoretical and abstract level, but sometimes it leads to very concrete applications. I hope that by doing this, I'm making Canada and the world better. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mohar. Louis-Paul Rivet. Louis-Paul Rivet est professeur au département de mathématiques et de statistiques à l'Université Laval. He is an applied statistician and is a pioneer of the mathematical theory of copulas for modeling stochastics dependence. Ses travaux en analyse dimensionnelle, en statistique directionnelle sur les modèles de capture-recapture et en enchantillonnage ont eu un impact fondamental sur la mise en application des sciences statistiques dans le domaine de la finance, en actuariat, en statistique sociale, en sciences env environnementales et en biomécanique. Louis-Paul Rivet. Bonjour. Je suis mathématicien, statisticien pour être plus précis, et j'ai développé des outils probabilistes pour faire parler les données dans de nombreux domaines où le traitement et l'interprétation des données jouent un rôle fondamental. J'ai, entre autres, créer des méthodes statistiques pour estimer la taille de population animale à partir de résultats d'inventaire. Ces méthodes sont, par exemple, utiles pour le suivi du troupeau de caribous de la rivière Georges au nord du Québec, qui a fortement décliné au cours des dernières années. Merci. Merci, M. Rivet. Alain Schaeffer. 
Ala Sheffer is a professor in the Department of Computer Science at the University of British Columbia. Elle est une chef de file mondiale dans le domaine de l'infographie et du traitement de la géométrie. Her methods, some of which are incorporated into major modeling software packages, enable computer animators, designers, and artists to easily generate and manipulate computer models of complex real world and imaginary shapes. Ala Sheffer. I'm truly honored to become a member of the Royal Society. I would like to thank everyone who helped me get to this position, my students, family, and colleagues. I see my nomination as both a recognition of my specific work and of the importance of computer science and specifically geometric modeling to modern society. My current work addresses two important modeling applications. I'm developing algorithms that make digital fabrication technologies more accessible, robust, and broadly applicable. I'm also exploring methods for helping expert and amateur artists create rich digital content by making computer interaction more intuitive and automating the more tedious aspects of digital content manipulation. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Schaffer. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, c'était les nouveaux membres de l'Académie des Sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, please congratulate the new fellows of the Academy of Science. I would now like to invite Dr. John Small, President of the Academy of Science, to say a few words. I am delighted to welcome you into the Academy of Science of the Royal Society of Canada. Bienvenue au sein de l'Académie des Sciences de la Société Royale du Canada. My only regret is that I cannot greet you and congratulate you in person. That will have to wait till next year's meeting, which I very much hope you will attend. All too often we find ourselves immersed in a cynical world, but this day counters and transforms that significantly. I am pretty sure you will remember this day for the rest of your life, just as I remember my induction from 25 years ago. This is a celebration of your remarkable achievements in science and engineering. Anyone who has sat on the selection committees knows what an exceptional pool of scholars Canada has produced. And to be selected as a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada is a defining accomplishment and a testament to your hard work, creativity, and insight. Congratulations. Ce jour est un jour de célébration. Félicitations. However, I also want to take this time to remind you that, in addition to recognizing outstanding research and scholarship, and by identifying and honoring the nation's leading practitioners, the Royal Society of Canada that you are now joining is fully committed to other urgent national and international objectives. We live in a world where evidence-based policy is critically important. However, science at best is frequently being underused by many politicians, and we as scientists and engineers have often been lacking in our efforts to effectively deliver the evidence and engage the public at large. At worst, science is being misinterpreted, misrepresented, and misused, or simply actively ignored. Science is under attack from many quarters. In this era of social media, many of the filters of peer review are gone. We used to call people who studied an issue for 35 years experts. Now, at least in some quarters, they are simply dismissed as elites. Scientists must counter this lack of appreciation of expertise. Facts and data do matter. Indeed, they are irreplaceable. Those who do not value hard-won evidence do not value democracy. The RSE is eminently qualified to provide scientific advice. And in this capacity, the Academy has the obligation to foster responsible information transfer. This is needed to empower the public to distinguish between legitimate science and false or misleading narratives. Ceci est un appel à l'action. Nous devons davantage accompagner votre dévouement à la science et faciliter la transmission des données probantes aux décideurs politiques, aux politiciens et au grand public. As newly inducted fellows, I call on you to magnify the RSE's capacity to promote science literacy, explain the value of research, and increase the communication of the RSE's knowledge both within and outside Canada. Canada and the rest of the world needs all of us to be engaged. When I think about the excellence of our 2020 inductees, I have confidence the RSE will be capable of providing that leadership. I hope you will acknowledge that with RSE fellowship, 
there also comes the responsibility to inform and inspire your fellow citizens. If the RSC is not ready to lead the way, then who is? I very much hope that you will continue to embrace these challenges, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Again, I extend a heartfelt welcome to you all. Congratulations. Felicitations. Thank you, Professor Small. We have now arrived at the last category of members. Specially elected fellows are individuals in Canadian public life whose accomplishments have been of exceptional value in promoting the purpose of the Royal Society of Canada in ways that contribute significantly to Canadian society. La prochaine catégorie de membres est celle des membres élus à titre spécial qui accueillent cette année un nouveau membre. Gilles Patry. Gilles Patry est le directeur général du groupe U15 et professeur et recteur émérite à l'Université d'Ottawa. His pioneering research in environmental engineering led, among other things, to the development of GPS-X, the industry standard in wastewater treatment, modeling, and simulation. Il a été doyen de la faculté de génie, vice-recteur aux études, recteur et vice-chancelier de l'Université d'Ottawa. Il a également été président et PDG de la Fondation canadienne pour l'innovation. Gilles Patry. Merci, Sheila, et bravo à toi pour ce tour de force. Vous aurez remarqué que mon parcours professionnel n'est pas tout à fait conforme au parcours académique traditionnel. Ingénieur conseil, professeur, président fondateur d'une PME, administrateur universitaire, président d'une agence subventionnaire, puis directeur général au U15. In each and every one of these exciting challenges, I've had the opportunity and the privilege of being surrounded by exceptional individuals who've supported me and made the last 40 years so much more exciting. Thank you to the Royal Society of Canada and special thanks to my wife, Ruby Heat. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur Patry. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this year's induction ceremony, but please stay for some screenshots. Merci beaucoup et bonne soirée. J'espère que vous allez vous joindre à nous l'année prochaine à Montréal. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. And I do I really, really hope we meet in person for next year's induction ceremony in Montreal. Please stay for screenshots. Thank you very much. Merci, Sheila.